Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on this video. Today we're going to take a look at the very latest Ubuntu release, Ubuntu 1704 Zesty Zappas. We'll take a look at the release notes first and then we'll take a quick look at the system itself running in a virtual machine. This is not an in-depth review, this is just a quick look. It's a, tra it's a tradition on this channel that we take a look at the new Ubuntu's. Of course this time around it's a little strange because on April the 5th Ubuntu announced that they're going to make some major changes. The biggest of which that affects the desktop is the fact that they're going to be dropping the Unity desktop environment in favor of GNOME. So let's look at the release notes and see what they got to say. Introduction a bunch of download links where you can get Ubuntu 1704, how to upgrade from Ubuntu 1610, new features in 1704, not a whole lot to talk about here. We've got a 32-bit power PC support, now that has been dropped. We've got networking that now uses system D to resolve DNS. We have the big change in the guts of the system where the installer no longer creates a default swap partition it creates a swap file instead and we'll take a look at that and how that works got some updated packages using kernel 410 we can now do driverless printing a few small changes to the ubuntu desktop we get an upgrade on libreoffice all of the gnome applications have been upgraded to 3.24 and now the calendar has a week view. Woohoo! Gconf has been dropped in favor of G settings because Gconf has been deprecated for quite some time. And then there's some stuff here about Ubuntu Server. We don't care much about that. We have the known issues. Not much to report here so far. A little problem with OpenVPN version 2.4. And on the desktop, some third party dev files are not installable on the software app and then some of the themes might not work because the developers need to upgrade to GTK 3.20 then we have a list of official flavors of Ubuntu that come with something other than the Unity desktop these are separate projects that have been blessed by Canonical as being official spins of Ubuntu we've got Kubuntu that comes with the KDE Plasma desktop and then we have Lubuntu which comes with LXDE that is very lightweight. We also have Ubuntu Budgie. The Budgie desktop comes from the Solus project. They have their own distribution but their desktop has been ported to Ubuntu. Ubuntu Gnome. Well this is going to be one of the last times you see that because Ubuntu itself is going to be going to Gnome. And then we have Ubuntu Chillin'. I know, that's how you say it, believe it or not. Looks like Kylin to me. But that is a Chinese market version of Ubuntu. And then we have Ubuntu Mate. And yes, I'm pronouncing that correctly because the developers call it Mate. The people who actually developed the Mate desktop have named it after a South American drink called Yerba Mate. And so that's where it comes from. But it looks just like Mate now, doesn't it? Now that's going to start the debate all over again in the comments. Ubuntu Mate. Have fun with that, gang. We've got Ubuntu Studio, which is a special version of Ubuntu that features all kinds of video and audio editing software. It's set up to become a workstation that you can just set up somewhere to do that sort of work. And then finally, X Ubuntu or Zubuntu. I like to call it Zubuntu, and that features the XFCE desktop. So I will definitely put a link to these release notes in the description. And if you want to jump over and check it out, then you can be my guest. So let's go look at the system itself. It looks a lot like Ubuntu 1610, which looked a lot like Ubuntu 1604, which looked a lot like Ubuntu 1510, which looked a lot like Ubuntu 1504. You get the point. It hasn't changed much in a long, long time. Of course, people who install these systems in companies like that because they don't like to have to retrain people every time something changes. A reminder here that we're just taking a look around. I will miss some features. I'm not going to get into everything. We're just going to take a quick look at the system. And so if you're brand new to Linux, uh, 
this is just a quick tour to let you know what's going on. So this is the Unity desktop environment. It's what it looks like. And we have over here this calendar that now has a week view. Woohoo. Um, this is the dash, and this is where you find programs and files that are on your computer. When you first open it up, it goes to most recently used programs, and some recent files will show up there as well. This is a virtual machine, so there are no recent files. You can also look at all of the applications that are on your computer. You get a complete list of everything installed here. This is the file manager. It's simply called Files, but the real name for this program is Nautilus, and it comes from the GNOME project, so it looks and acts just like Nautilus does everywhere else. They don't make any major changes for Ubuntu. You can resize these icons simply by holding down the control key and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. So there you go. Firefox is the default web browser for Ubuntu and has been since the first version of Ubuntu was released. So if you're a Firefox user, you should be just fine. You can sync everything up and you're good to go. Then we have uh, some LibreOffice stuff here. We've got Writer, we've got Calc and Impress. Writer is a word processor. Calc is for spreadsheets. And then we have uh, Impress, which is sort of like PowerPoint if you're used to Microsoft Office products. Then we have the software application. There's one more icon that should be here, but I removed it earlier. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. If you just install this, it will show up. And uh, you may find uh, that you have that there. We'll look at it in just a second. So here's what the very latest LibreOffice looks like when it opens up, or impress, that is. Cool. I like that. Very nice, LibreOffice Impress. So the one icon that should be here that isn't here is this guy. Uh, this is a little dedicated web browser that when you open it, it logs into Amazon. So if you are an Amazon shopper, you would use this to make purchases from Amazon. And then Ubuntu would get a little kickback from that. They get a little love from Amazon. And it seems to have crashed as soon as it opened because it's no longer there anymore. And I bet you anything that a crash report will show up here shortly and it'll say that it didn't work. So let's try and fire it off again and see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there you go. It loaded up and that's what it looks like. And it just disappears. Lovely, okay. I don't know why that's doing that, but there you go. <laughs> Not something I would use on a regular basis anyway. Uh, let's take a quick look around under the hood. That's the wrong terminal, thank you. I want the one for the virtual machine. Every now and then when I use the keyboard shortcut to open a terminal, it gets confused and opens the one for the host. But this is the one for this machine. So let us first see what kernel version we are running. Ah, we got kernel 410.0.19, generic. And let us also see uh, how this swap thing is set up. The quickest way to do that, we can look at free. And then we can see that we've got 745 megabytes of swap, none of which is being used right now. And I have given this machine four gigabytes of memory to play with. Uh, so it would run pretty fast while I was doing this video. So where is this swap file? It's going to be in the root directory. So if we just do list storage on root, then you'll see that we have, there it is, it's the swap file right there right there which will be a 745 745 megabyte file that's what it created when it installed this i don't know how that figures that out whether it's a stock size or whether it computes it against memory uh, 745 megabytes actually comes across as being a bit small to me i think two gigabytes would be better but there you go most machines these days have an abundance of memory in them and they don't use swap very often that's why Ubuntu said, hey, we can just drop the swap partition. We don't have to worry about that. And so there you go. Uh, but you do have to have a little swap around somewhere, gang. Don't run completely without swap because there are some programs in Linux that depend on it. So a swap file is a good solution to that. 
So what can we do with the Unity desktop as far as theming it up is concerned? Well, let's take a look at settings here. You've got a, a few choices under appearance. You can change the behavior of the desktop a little bit and you can choose a background and you can resize the launcher over here and then you can like change the menu behavior. Usually menu items will appear up here for windows that are open but you can move them to where they appear with the window. And then a tool that ordinarily does not come installed by default is the Unity Tweak Tool and that allows you to do some more tweaking here. And for the longest time in Unity, one of the biggest complaints about it was this dash over here. So they have all kinds of different ways that you can customize this. And finally, they have it where you can move it to the bottom. That showed up a few releases back. So if you're more comfortable having this down here on the bottom, then you can move it down there. It works and acts exactly the same way. There is another feature of Ubuntu that is pretty cool, and it's one of the things about Unity that I really like, and it was called the Heads Up Display. Now, what that does is it allows you to search through these menus and type things in directly. So, if you're using some applications, those can be quite large. So, I'll show you how that works. If you hit the alternate key, this little box shows up, and then you start typing, and whatever application is up front then it goes through that menu and it finds it and then you can just click on it like that or you can do it with the keyboard as well and it will open that part of the system in this case it did it here so you can see when to overview so there's some other things you can change in unity tweak tool here's where you can get themes and things like that the last unity ladies and gentlemen can't believe it if we log out of the system I'll show you where you can take a look at Unity 8. So let me just log out here. I cannot show you Unity 8 in a virtual machine. It does not work properly. It will not load, but this will probably be the last time that anybody will ever have a chance to look at it officially from Ubuntu as they have completely dropped development. So you just click on that little icon and then you choose Unity 8 and when you log in you're going to be in a Unity 8 session. The only thing about that is that the Unity 8 session doesn't really have a lot of useful applications associated with it at this point. It's just a preview and like I said that will probably not be in Ubuntu uh, 17.10 for sure. So there you go gang. It's a look around Ubuntu 17.04 and a look at the release notes really not that much to write home about. One thing I did want to talk about at the end of this video is the release cycle for Ubuntu because it confuses people in a big way. Ubuntu releases two different, I guess you could call it tracks, of uh, releases. One is the interim releases. They come out every six months and this is the latest and greatest. So if you want to be on that track then you would install for instance Ubuntu 1704 and when 1704 uh, when the new version came along which would be 1710 then you could upgrade to that and you would keep going that way then they have the long-term support releases which come out every two years so Ubuntu 1604 is the current long-term release and then also we have Ubuntu 1404 that's currently being supported as well now Ubuntu 1204 loses support this month so if you're using it you're gonna to have to move up to something you're gonna to have to get off of that because once the support is taken away the repositories no longer work and you won't be able to install software so that is one of the reasons also you don't get security updates uh, so that's another reason not to be doing that speaking of which we didn't look too much at the software application so I'm going to start that up and let that load up and we can take a look around with that. Uh, so most folks who are running this on a desktop at home, they're probably going to be wanting to use the long-term support release. It makes a lot of sense. It's supported for five years and you don't have to worry about upgrading. If for some reason you need the latest and greatest packages, then you're going to want to be on the interim releases. Now Ubuntu software, this application actually comes from the GNOME project and so this will continue and this is a pretty nifty little application this replace, replaces an older application 
uh, that Ubuntu used to have called the Software Center, which wasn't really all that great. Uh, this is not a perfect application. It doesn't show every piece of software that's available for the system, but pretty much all of the basic stuff is here. It gives you a list of everything that is installed. It will also tell you if you have any updates to the software that's installed, and you can always do searches here. So if we want to do a search for a piece of software, uh, let's see, what do we not have installed on this machine? Let's look for GR Sync. That pops right up. And if we want to install it, well, it's no big deal at all. All you got to do is click on install. It'll ask for administrator access there. So you have to give it the sudo password. And then it will let you install your software. Pretty cool application to play with. And it's gotten better. When it was first introduced in Ubuntu, it was kind of shaky. But now it's pretty cool. So, there you go, gang. That is a look at Ubuntu 17.04. And if you want to play around with it, it is available for download now in an official release. It's actually been in beta for some time. I was running it in beta and doing updates on it. But... Uh, I learned the hard way with Ubuntu 16.04 that I will not do a review of any Ubuntu project before it is officially released because on release day things tend to change. So you might say, oh this is great, it's working well and with 16.04 they actually introduced some bugs. <laughs> so like three days after it was officially released people were going, ah my Wi-Fi doesn't hook up, I don't understand. So there you go. So we'll go ahead and shut this down. Just log out of it. And while it's doing that, we'll jump over here. One last look at the release notes page. This will be in the description to the video. Your comments and suggestions are always welcome. Also, be sure and check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. There's always a bunch of stuff going on over there you might want to be involved with if you're a Facebook user. Check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of great stories about Linux from contributors such as myself as well. We'll do it again soon. Thanks for watching.